Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to show you uh, questions um, involving the sum of a geometric progression. Alright, so uh, basically I'm just going to show you a few examples of the questions of normally how they ask questions involving sum of a geometric progression. Okay, there's a mistake here. This one should be a geometric progression. Alright, so basically it's almost same like your arithmetic progression, uh, just that now you're involving uh, geometric. Okay, they will ask you to find the first term, ask you to find the common ratio, not the common difference. Alright, so let's get into it. So I'll show you. Okay, this is the first type of question. Okay, they give you a geometric sequence. Alright, and then they want you to find the sum of the first seven terms. Okay, so you always write out what we have first, first term, and then our common ratio is 12 divided by 4. So you get 3. Okay, now for sum of geometric progression, the, there is a slight difference in the formula, of course, but we have a criteria here. We need to check our common ratio. Alright, if the common ratio calculated is more than 0, you need to use this formula. Okay, if the common ratio is less than 1, then you need to use this formula. So for the sum of uh, geometric progression, you always need to check your R value first, your common ratio value first. All right. So in this case, this is 3, right? Bigger than 0. So I'm going to use this for my calculation. Okay, so S7 okay, equals to 4. All right, and then my R n. Okay, this is not n minus one. Uh. This is R n. So three seven to the power of seven minus one. Okay, and then three minus one. All right. So remember, okay, uh, when uh, when it's involving uh, sum of geometric progression, you always need to check your common ratio value first. Okay, you need to see whether it's bigger than zero or less than one. All right, so that is the first question. Okay, in mind, let me just quickly calculate this. 4 times 3 to the power of 7 minus 1. Okay, divided by. So we are going to get this. 4, 3, 7, 2. Okay, so meaning if I uh, add up the geometric progression for the first 7 term from T1 until T7, if I add up everything, is going to equal to this value okay sum of terms all right let's look at the second example here okay find the sum of the first n terms for the following geometric progression okay so remember when the questions uh i mentioned this in the arithmetic progression if they ask you to find sum of the first n terms and final term is given okay so we equate Tn is equal to the final term. Okay, because we need to know in total in this sequence got how many terms before we can actually calculate the sum. Alright, so Tn equals to 12. Okay, so your A is 3 over 8. Your R is 2. Alright, if you take 3 over 4 divided by 3 over 8, you should get Okay, so we are going to substitute into the formula. Alright, AR, M minus 1, right? So, 3 over 8. Okay, R, M minus 1. Equals to 12. Alright, so I'm just going to calculate this. 2 minus 1. This one, you're going to bring it over. Alright, so it's going to be 12 divided by this. So it's going to be... 32 right okay and then in this case it's up to you uh, how you want to solve it uh, if you want to use log okay you can use log to solve this all right or you can just change it into base 2 okay so this is also equals to 2 to the power of uh, 5 okay yep correct so once the base is the same m minus 1 is equals to 5 so n is equals to 6. 
All right. So once you already know the total number of terms here is six. So there are six terms in this sequence. Then you can find the sum of the six terms. Okay, meaning you just put in S6. Alright, but which formula to use? Okay, we need to check. Okay, since R is bigger than zero, so we are going to use this. Okay, oops, not enough space. Okay, let me just move this. A little bit to the side. Oh, too much. Okay. So, S6, alright, 3 over 8, okay, what is my R, and then 6 minus 1, okay, divided by 2 minus 1, okay, so uh, this one, let's just quickly calculate this, 3 over 8, 2 to the power of 6 minus 1, So you are going to get 189 over 8. So that is the sum. Okay, so I'm just going to show you an extra thing if I use log to solve this. Alright, so if let's say I'm using log to solve. Okay, meaning you lock both sides. Alright, and then this one, you're going to bring it forward. Okay, and then you divide log 2. So, n minus 1, log 32, divide by log 2. Okay, so uh, if you press or if you punch in your calculator, right, you should also get back the same answer, actually. So, log 32 divided by log 2 is also equals to 5. Alright, so, same answer. Okay, so it's depending on... Uh, what do you call uh, which method you prefer all right if the number cannot be changed to the same base uh, to the same index number right same index base number then you have to use log okay all right so that is the second question okay remember the relationship between the sum of the first n terms and also the last term if it's already given okay all right this is what is uh, they will always ask okay Okay, find the sum of terms from 5th to ninth term, meaning the sum of consecutive terms. Okay, so basically what they are one is here. Okay, sum of 5th term to ninth term. Alright, meaning I want to know the sum, the total of these 5 terms at the back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the total, which is the 9 terms, add up everything, the sum, Minus of the ones that are not required, which is this one. Okay, T1 until T4 is what I don't want. Okay, so total minus the sum of the first four terms. Alright, so just remember. Okay, you will use uh, what we call S9. Okay, sum of the total nine terms. Minus of the one that we do not want, which is the S4. Sum of the first four terms. Okay. So we still need to determine our A and also our common ratio. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, right? It's bigger than 0. So we are going to use this formula, the first formula. So S9, right? Okay, so it's going to equal, uh, right, S9 minus S4 is going to equal, so 2, oh my gosh. This is 4 to the power of 9 minus 1 divided by 3. Okay, because 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, and then we minus as 4. A2. Uh, 4 to the power of 4 minus 1 by 3. Okay, and then this one you can just solve using your calculator or since this is 2 over 3 this is 2 over 3 right we can actually bring it up factorize it up all right then you're left with 4 9 minus 1 and then minus 4 to the power of 4 and then plus 1 
okay then you should be able to get your answer all right so let's do this quickly Four to the power of nine minus one minus four to the power of four plus one so what we have is this one seven four five nine Okay, so that is the sum of all the terms from T5 until T9, meaning the total here is this value. Okay, so that is the uh, questions okay, involving the sum of terms. Alright, and then don't forget the relationship here. Okay, Tn is equals to Sn minus Sn minus 1. Alright, so an example will be uh, what you call... Uh, let me find an example of that question. All right. <clears throat> okay, question eight, right? So if you see here, some of the first n terms of a geometric progression is given by this. Okay, meaning that my Sn, right, is equals to this one. A three n minus one, right? Okay, calculate the first term and the fourth term hence find the common ratio all right so in this case you can actually use this relationship the tn equals to this one all right so if i want to calculate the fourth term okay because if first term right meaning that t1 is also equals to s1 don't forget this relationship okay so, if I want to find the fourth term, meaning I need to fourth term, right? T4 is equals to S4 minus S3. Okay, and then you just uh, substitute the value into the equation here. Alright, and then you will get your fourth term. Okay, so this is an example of a question that uses the relationship between the number of terms and the sum of terms. Okay, alright. So the next part I'm going to show you <coughs> is the sum of infinity. Okay, for a geometric progression. All right. So uh, for arithmetic progression, there is no such thing as sum of infinity. Okay, we don't need to calculate that. Okay, for a geometric progression, we have a formula to calculate the sum to infinity. All right, meaning that you're going to continuously add on until non-stop. That's the meaning of infinity, right? Okay, so this is the formula that you're going to use. All right, now be careful of this thing. Okay, your common ratio, it must be within this range. It cannot be more than that. All right, if it's more than that, uh, the formula doesn't work. Okay, so let's look at a few examples here. All right, they asked me to find the sum to infinity of a geometric progression. Okay, so my first term is 9. My common ratio, 3 divided by 9, is 1 over 3. Okay, so we're just going to substitute this into the formula. Okay, 9, 1, minus 1 over 3. Okay, so basically you are going to get a, what we call a fraction, I believe. Yeah, okay. 27 over 2 all right or if you change it into decimal place it will be 13.5 okay that is the first example all right second example all right okay changing a recurring decimal okay if you remember what is recurring decimals to fraction all right so if you see a number here and then there's a dot on top meaning that the repeating number is this one okay this is the repeating number okay so previously uh, in the earlier chapter right when we teach you the recurring decimals okay we teach you a simple way for you to identify the fraction how to change this into a fraction okay so if my repeating number is single decimal one decimal okay meaning is 3 over 9 so this one if you can simplify then you need to simplify so this one is 1 over 3 okay so let's say if my uh what you call repeating is two decimals okay so it will be 34 over 99 all right 
So this is in the earlier chapter. Okay, when we learn, uh, we teach you a very simple way to identify the uh, what we call fraction, how to change a recurring decimal into fractions. Okay, so another way to do this is by using the sum to infinity formula. All right, but first you need to uh, write out the terms for this particular uh, repeating uh, what we call recurring decimals first. Okay, I know it's zero point three 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 three. Okay, so we are going to separate it into terms. All right, so my Okay, if we three 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 right. Okay, so first term will be zero point three plus second term is zero point zero three plus third term is zero point zero zero three plus point zero 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 three. Okay, and then so on and so forth. Alright, so basically you need to change this one into like this. Okay. And then this is your first term, which is your this one, and then your common ratio. Okay, second term divided by first term. Point three. Okay, so what we are going to get here is one over ten or zero point one. Okay, so we need to check it's in the range. Okay, so meaning we can calculate the sum to the infinity so 0 0.3 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1 so this you will get 0 0.3 over 0 0.9 so eventually you are still getting 1 over 3 okay you're still getting the same value like this <coughs> all right so for uh, recurring decimals meaning decimal repeating decimals if you want to change it into fraction, okay, you can use the formula here, the sum to infinity formula here. <coughs> All right. Okay. So the final one. Okay, the first term given sum of infinity is given. They ask you to find the common ratio. So this is just a simple, uh, what we call substitution. All right. So you just put in whatever that you have. Okay. So we are going to substitute into this formula. <coughs> Okay, so 2 over 5 is equals to 1 over 5 minus 1 over r or minus r. Okay, so I'm going to shift the 1 over 5 over. Alright, <clears throat> so when I shift the 1 over 5 over, I'm going to bring the uh, divide sign together. So it's going to be 1 over 5 divide 2 over 5. Okay, so when you bring the top number, you're going to bring the divide sign together. Alright, so 1 over 5 divide, if I change to multiply, this is switch. <coughs> okay, so 1 minus r equals to half. So r is also equals to half. Okay, because I take the 1 minus go to the right side. So 1 minus half is half. Okay, so that is your common ratio. So you always check whether it's within the range. Okay, if the common ratio that you calculated is more than the value here, then meaning it's wrong. Lah. All right, <clears throat> so basically that is it. Okay, uh, sum for a geometric progression. Okay, sum of terms, sum of consecutive terms, all right, and then uh, sum to infinity. Okay, so all these are very important. Okay, you must know all this, all right, because they are going to, uh, normally they are going to combine everything. Lah. Okay, so basically that is it. Alright, that is it for today. So done with your chapter 5. Okay, so I'll see you again in the next uh, chapter. Okay, bye.